Uh, welcome to this fifth session of podcasts carried out by the International Hellenic University and the School of Science and Technology. It's uh, a real pleasure today to be interviewing Dr. Theodor Panagos. Dr. Panagos is a lawyer by trade and uh, a very successful lecturer in our Master of Science in Energy Systems program for the past years. Dr. Panagos has significant knowledge of the energy sector in Greece, in particular with regards to the surrounding regulatory and legal framework. He has occupied in recent years important positions, such as Vice President of the Regulatory Authority for Energy from 2005 until 2010, and he has been a member of the National Council of Energy from 2007 until 2009. Uh, Dr. Panagos, uh, thank you for agreeing to do this podcast session with us, and uh, let me already get on with my first question. How would you evaluate the current legal regulatory framework concerning energy in Greece? And uh, has it changed over time? Well, actually, the Greek energy legislation followed the changes of the European legislation as it, is, as it was, was set out in the frame of the liberalized energy market. The legislative boom took place between 1999 and 2006 with the second generation European energy legislation and completed in 2011 with the third generation European legislation known as third package of liberalization. In my opinion, the entire current energy legal regulatory framework in Greece is now pretty complete. In this regard, there is a complete general legal framework in the energy sector in accordance to the European Union legislation together with other special laws concerning the renewable energy sources, the use of cogeneration, the use of biofuels, etc. So, to sum up, I would like to highlight that the European regulations for energy are directly incorporated into our internal law. There is also a complete legislation for the particular markets such as electricity and natural gas in the form of codes in addition, there are special regulations for licensing in the above sectors. It is true that some amendments took place in the laws mainly in order to simplify various procedures in favor of investors. It is important to mention that coding belongs to the regulator's power, so the codes, as a very flexible energy secondary regulation, can easily be changed after the necessary public consultation in order to be harmonized in the daily market demands. Does the legal framework surrounding different energy technologies in Greece promote energy security for the country in your opinion? In fact, the legal framework regulating different energy technologies constitutes an effective factor in promoting energy security in this country. As far as, as in Greece, some of the energy raw materials, such as oil, are imported, the state decided to proceed, since the beginning of the 90s, to the diversification of the fuel used for the electricity generation. So, the natural gas and the renewables should be promoted. The security of legislation offered several new investments in the both fields especially after the liberalization of the energy market and the participation of the privates. I would say that it is true that the private newcomer would like to carry on its business within a safe economic environment where it could equally compete the dominant player, actually the former monopoly. As a result of the change of the fuel mix on the one hand, and the entrance of the privates on the other, the energy map of the country changed by using energy sources environmentally friendly within a competitive environment. Meanwhile, serious measures have been taken for the protection of consumers. In this regard, the whole energy legislation supported the roadmap followed, which can be summarized in the following targets, growth, diversification of fuel mix, protection of the environment, 
and protection of the consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to my third question. Emissions trading, that is uh, buying and selling the right to pollute in a market, has been hailed by many as a solution to limiting pollution and greenhouse gases. But uh, what does research or experience show about the effectiveness of such policies and uh, what legal challenges do policies like emissions trading pose? It is quite true that the main rule of the Kyoto Protocol was whoever pollutes pays. It is still considered the most effective tool for the reduction of the pollution and greenhouse gases. However, it seems that we need to do more towards this direction due to the fact that the main energy consuming developing countries have not ratified the protocol yet. It also seems that some further ideas must be examined. For example, a question could be arisen if we must stay to the penalty scheme or if we must combine it with an incentive scheme. Yes, it seems that the whole system of emission trading, where it is fully enforced, works. Energy consuming companies started to prepare their activities to the direction of limiting the pollution, investing to modern technologies or diversifying the energy materials used. Unfortunately, the economic crisis found countries and companies unprepared and made them to return to the use of cheap energy, that is to say, the polluting energy. The whole problem is larger to the developing countries, which are guilty in quotations for the higher pollution in this planet. Yes, of course, the emission trading opened a new field for setting advanced regulations. However, it is difficult to implement a global effective legal mechanism. It is about time for all governments to realize the importance of protecting the environment in order the appropriate measures to be taken as soon as possible. How important then is a specialization for a successful career in the energy sector, both for engineers as well as for managers, economists and lawyers? Nowadays, the scientific specialization is, in general, a very important factor for a successful career. In particular, the specialization plays a significant role in the developing sector such as the energy sector, a sector that requires special skills and knowledge. In this regard, people who are intending to professionally remain in this field must specialize in the right way. This way, the right way, could be the master level. It is well known that there is one in the International Hellenic University, the Master in Energy Systems, where the candidate gets on not only specialized knowledge, but also general knowledge on energy regulation and energy strategy. So, to sum up, in my opinion, the specialization in the energy sector and for every profession related to that, as a very important tool, if not a necessity, for a successful career. And for my final question, uh, in your opinion, what further actions could be taken to further support the energy sector in Greece? The energy sector is characterized as one of the few strategic sectors for the economy of our country. In order to increase the investments in this sector, you will need high volumes of capital. It is a capital-intensive sector. In this regard, bank lending is absolutely necessary. Under the actual economic circumstances, the state must urgently constitute a special financing mechanism to support the energy investments. It is important to consider the fact that the growth of the energy sector has multiple positive effects such as the reduction of the unemployment, the employment of specialized staff, as well as the positive effects of the entire operation of an investment in the national economy as a whole. 
Dr. Panagos, thank you for your time and thank you for staying with us. If you would like more information into the International Hellenic University and the School of Science and Technology or any of our graduate programs, please visit tech.ihu.edu.gr. Thanks for your time.